I'm turning to Ms. Kuneva, who not only uh, uh, is the, the Vice Prime Minister uh, of Bulgaria in charge of European Affairs, but also has been there some years ago where uh, some of our friends uh, from the Western Balkans are now. Um, what do we do when uh, Europe uh, has to be more attractive? Uh, what can we do on the Balkans from, from our experience to make kind of the European, uh, uh, the European perspective reinvigorate the local reforms? Well, in this sense, I uh, kind of wear still two hats. The one is as a former chief negotiator. And I uh, still remember quite well, I keep this feeling of anguish that we are not able to deliver as, uh, as fast as possible uh, and not to close chapters, open chapters, and at the end uh, being uh, as soon as possible under the shelter. The European Union is still about this when there is a rainy day in surround to be under the shelter. Actually, I'm almost quoting one of, of my colleagues, a, a, a Spanish, a very, a very nice and very uh, wise colleague uh, who was um, at that time Minister for Europe. So the other one, of course, is uh, the other hat which I wear, and this is about uh, being a member of the European Commission, knowing how important it is to schedule all the things and to be very well prepared because after you are in a situation to tackle with all the remaining problems, so-called unfinished business of the enlargement. Uh, what I can uh, uh, tell you from my experience is that um, we need to be very concrete and we need to work. Recently we had a, again uh, uh, an opportunity to, 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 to repeat that uh, trust between partners is crucial but also confidence in the process, which means that if the word is given, the word is given, and no moving targets. Uh, we, uh, of course, we can frame and, uh, and make uh, and carefully choose the wording. Uh, I simply don't believe that saying that in the next four years there will be no enlargement is uh, an absolute necessity. By the way, we don't have a financial framework and we all know what does it mean if you, don't, if, if, if you are not under the ceiling of a uh, uh, financial framework for enlargement. So it's clear. Everybody knows about this, at least people who are entitled to deal with, with the process. Uh, so we need to check uh, against reality what, uh, how the processes are going on in, uh, in the different countries but also be um, as much engaged as possible. This morning, we uh, actually at noon, we talked with um, uh, Vice President and uh, my dear uh, colleague Daniel about uh, um, energy projects, about how important is neighborhood policy. It's all true. But I believe that we are missing some parts like science, like research and development, like culture. And... Um, uh, Having said uh, this word about culture, I would like to finish with one story which I just recall right now. It's from Milorad Pavic. It's an excellent uh, writer. And the story is as follows. There was uh, two students in a beautiful central European country. And uh, um, a boy, a young boy, who uh, were coming from somewhere uh, remote place. And uh, he, he, he studied kind of polytechnical school. And the girl was uh, a beautiful one girl from, uh, from a very uh, obviously rich family. Uh, they, they share some, uh, some um, uh, subjects and uh, uh, the boy came quite often to help her in mathematics and things like this and because she knew that uh, she's quite, he's quite poor, uh, she always uh, um, gave him uh, uh, breakfast or croissants or, you know, just being uh, quite hospitable to him. 
Uh, but when the first year was over and they and uh, she she was hesitant, maybe this is an affair, maybe this is kind of a beginning of very tender relationships. Uh, the boy stopped coming and uh, and see her. And uh, once when she was contemplating about uh, him, she saw at uh, at the well at some of the um, uh, well. A, a, a forgotten, a forgotten tray with some leftovers uh, from the food. Uh, she was dedicated to, to 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 him. Well, this is the end of the story. But the name of the girl was Europe, and the name of the boy was Balkan. It's not all about the boy to be fat, and not only for the girl to be uh, to be well treated. This is about true feelings. And uh, we need really very careful to consider uh, a real dedication and real trust from the both sides. Otherwise, this is not a good start. Well, this is my small intervention. Uh, Ms. Mugirini, if we allow me, I'll come back to you because you wanted to um, also talk about credibility at some point. I think this is a good yes. moment to do it. You didn't manage to look at my notes, but that's exactly what I wrote now uh, on paper, because I think that uh, your last question was about uh, what can make the European perspective more attractive. And I think it is not croissant, uh, it's credibility. Uh, I think this is the point uh, on which we should focus now. Um, that is true for the Western Balkans, that is true for Turkey. I don't know if we want to talk about that as well, but... Uh, uh, Seeing the process uh, uh, as I have seen it from the outside for many years, and now for some years from the inside, I think the problem we have is not about uh, seeing the added value of the process or of the outcome. Because I think all of us realize that the European Union is not going to be complete, that the European Union has only uh, to gain from a stabilized region, and this is the only part of the region where the European Union has really the instruments to make sure that it becomes stable or it stays stable, depending on the parts of the region. Uh, and it is very clear, I think, still, still, uh, to all the public opinions and to most of the political leaderships in the Western Balkan countries and in Turkey, even if I think it's different, uh, that uh, uh, it is uh, definitely a win-win situation and added value to not only move on on the process but also to get to the end of the process. The point is that, now I'm not very good in telling stories, uh, even if I would love to, uh, the point is how do we move forward in, in, in the trust, in, in believing that the other side is really interested, uh, as we would like to be in the story. Uh, and so that we engage for real. Uh, and the point is that if we do not move to that step, which is not about feeding, but it's about trusting, um, the process is going to die. That is very clear to me. Uh, and that is what scares me, and that's also why I'm personally, uh, with my colleagues in the Commission and in the Council, uh, because many ministers are helping in that uh, from the region and not from the region, uh, but always with a regional uh, approach. Uh, how do we seriously show that uh, on the European Union side uh, we do it for real, that it is credible? Uh, this is public, right? Okay. Um, I'll, be, I'll be more diplomatic than I'm, I am usually then. But uh, that's why I said that, uh, which is not that much anyway, <laughs> uh, this is why I said that uh, the narrative should not be that of the five years freeze, but should be what do we do in these five years together, day by day. Uh, because again, uh, any process being it a crisis management process, being it a confidence building process, being it an accession process, if you, if you only focus on the ultimate step, it's like when you climb a mountain. You have to know where you're going to, but if you look up, 
you don't move. You have to look at one step after the other, knowing exactly where you're going, but focusing on the following step. Uh, and that is exactly what we have to do, I think, here. Uh, being credible. Being credible on the European Union side means creating the 28 unanimity in the Council and the conditions in the Commission to uh, support the steps that are done when they are done in a very difficult way and supporting. I don't like at all the logic of give and take because I don't think it's a give and take. I think it's a give and give and the take and take. Uh, we both have something to give and we both have something to take. Um, but it's true that uh, this means in Brussels and in the 28 capitals of our member states, a shift in mentality, not approaching this process as if there were poor boys queuing up for croissants and us giving up, giving croissants for free, not at all, but we are together on a process and when a step is done, another step is done from our side because otherwise one of the two parties stays behind. Uh, which means overcoming the paternalistic approach, overcoming the paternalistic narrative, getting not only to the government to government or the institution to institution, but involving civil society, building from the bottom uh, this sense of being Europeans. Every time that I read in my speaking notes um, that uh, this is a process to bring into Europe the Western Balkans, I want to die because that's Europe already. Uh, it's just that we have, we have to let them down in our uh, spirit somehow, inside the European Union, that what we're doing is not, uh, is not something we do for charity or because uh, it's written somewhere. It's, something, it, it, it's a process of building the European Union, which is difficult, challenging on both sides. Uh, and requires a lot of credibility from the European Union side. Institutions and member states. Uh, because here, otherwise, a lot of games can be played. Uh, of blame games and, um, you know, uh, who is lagging behind, who is not lagging behind, who is helping, who is not helping. I think we really need a reality check, knowing that this is a common interest. Uh, it's not, uh, not one-side interest, it's a common interest we have and we have to make sure that the conditions, political conditions are there on both sides for having these uh, this steps, uh, this steps done um, for real. Because again, this has been the most successful policy of the European Union so far and this is the region, the Western Balkans, I mean then Bulgaria is exactly in between. Huh? between the Western Balkans and Turkey, so uh, perfect place to, to talk about that. But this is the region uh, where the real power of the European Union can be fully exercised. Um, and don't get me wrong, I don't mean a power on some countries, I mean a power, what you call the transformative power, a power of moving forward societies. Thanks a lot. Uh my next question is more about geopolitics because um, uh, people say we're celebrating the return of geopolitics uh, in the last uh, year, year and a half. We have seen um, a rising uh, revisionist uh, Russia. Uh, we have seen um, it using the energy instrument um, and this part of Europe is very vulnerable uh, to, to this kind of influences. So I'll turn maybe now to Minister Mitov and, and ask him about how do you see um, this? Russia, it's, it's uh, energy tool, but also um, this rhetoric, rhetoric of, of geopolitics, which changed a lot of the, let's say, political culture in the Balkans in a way we used to think in the enlargement paradigm. We used to think in the win-win uh, um, uh, kind of uh, scheme, and, and, and all of a sudden the zero-sum thinking uh, seems to be uh, prevailing again. Uh, I'm just going to recall Minister Lavrov, who a couple of months ago around the crisis of Macedonia suggested that it was about Bulgaria and Albania splitting it. I mean, 
is this uh, uh, how how as a country in the region, but also you member, uh, you would uh, you would comment on this? Well, that's a that's a huge conversation, and I will just try to outline a few a few elements of it. Um, so first, when it comes to when it comes to the recent events in Ukraine and our unfortunately turning out to be long non-military standoff with Russia, um, we have to take. An, take into consideration one thing. This was not our choice. From the very beginning, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, both the European Union and NATO started creating all the possible mechanisms in order to cooperate with Russia, bring Russia closer, understand Russia better, understand Russian interests, uh, try, to, um, try to somehow be sensitive towards, um, towards the Russian um, feelings, if you will. Well, little by little, that brought us to the situation we are, we are today. And it didn't happen immediately. We should have seen the signs much earlier. We should have seen the signs in 2008, when the, when the conflict in Georgia happened. Um, then, if we would have reacted in a different manner, in a different manner, in a different way, uh, maybe Ukraine today wouldn't have happened. Uh, but then we chose something else. Then we chose our, our economy before our values. And we need to turn again to the conversation of values. We need to turn back again to the conversation of liberal democracy versus other types of social architecture. Because what we're talking today is much deeper than the conflict in, in Ukraine. Of course, uh, we, we have the sanctions. That's the only instrument we have in order to try and influence the Russian policy in Ukraine. Uh, we are tying it with the, we're tying the sanctions with, the, um, with the, the, the implementation of the Minsk agreements. Uh, we, of course, talk about Crimea and everything else. Uh, but this challenge major challenge to the international order and major challenge towards the, um, the very fundaments of what, what we believe in is, is the, real, the real problem. Because to, to, a great, to a great extent, the Russian propaganda is also capable of eroding the, 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 uh, the trust in those values, the trust in our institutions, in our own countries. And we all know that, and we all have it. Uh, so what we need to do is get back to our values and be really truthful to those. And when we speak about the Western Balkans, that's what uh, stands as a choice in front of the countries on the Western, in the Western Balkans. Uh, when we speak about the different, the transformative power and everything else and, and, and the, the, the budget, uh, and all the, the other frameworks of reform, well, common foreign and security policy is there. In, in today's world, it's not about balancing, it's about choosing what do you want to be, what kind of society do you want to be, and, and really standing behind that, and leading even. It's not easy. I'm not saying it, it will be easy. It's not easy for us. It's not easy for anyone, especially the countries. Uh, who are waiting for uh, a little bit more uh, attention and, and a way ahead in their European integration, well, they, uh, they, suffer, they suffer a lot, but they also need to make choices and, and have leadership um, in, in terms of um, how to overcome the, the doubt of what kind of society they want to build. Um, I, can, I can talk for, for hours about this, uh, but uh, I, will, I will leave it here and I think we will have the possibility uh, a little bit later on to continue.